Welcome back to the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center. I'm Kelly Sheppins, the Director of Student Programs. We're, today we're going to talk about reptiles. So start off, what is a reptile? A reptile is a cold-blooded creature. Um, it has scaly, dry skin. It breathes through lungs, and some of them lay eggs. Today we're going to be talking about turtles, snakes, and alligators. So first we're going to introduce you to the Eastern Box Turtle. So we have a couple here. We have a male and a female box turtle. So we can kind of compare their sizes and some other characteristics that are different between the male and the female box turtles. So this one here, this smaller one, I'm going to put her down for right now. Um, this smaller one here, this is our male box turtle. This is Romeo. Um, if you can zoom in on his face, we have, you can tell, um, his eyes are a bright orange or red color. He has bright orange scales covering his legs, and he's a little bit smaller than, your, um, than the female box turtle. Box turtles get their name because they have a hinge on the bottom of their shell here, and they can actually shut the door of their shell. They can tuck their arms, legs, and heads in, and then they can shut the door and seal their self up kind of like a box for protection. So you're going to find these guys um, in your woodland areas or around marshy areas um, is where you're going to find them the most. And they're going to blend right in with the foliage and stuff that's on the ground. Our female box turtle you can see she's a little bit bigger in size. I'm going to put him down for just a second. The scales on her legs are a lighter color. It's not the bright orange like the, the male box turtle. And even her eyes are not as bright either. They're more of a brown tan color. So she's going to blend in a little bit more. The male needs to be bright, kind of like a peacock. Um, they're really bright, prominent colors to kind of attract a mate. And the girls, they don't need to have that. They're going to blend in. Their main job is to take care of their babies. There you go. There you go. You see them side by side. You can kind of see the differences in them as well. So these guys are a terrestrial turtle. They're going to find them on land. They don't do well in water. Um, they'll go to the water, kind of cool themselves off, and kind of soak a little bit. Um, but they do not swim. They're not a, a swimming type of turtle. This is a gopher tortoise. So gopher tortoises, they get their name because they actually burrow in the ground. And that is where they live. So they are built for digging holes underground. They have like a spade shaped foot here. If you can see the front foot, perfect for digging and pushing that um, soil out of their way. If you look at their face, they have dark eyes. And if you can see their mouth, their beak almost looks like um, the knife, a, a blade of a knife, kind of serrated a little bit. They're going to use that to eat foliage, different types of grasses and things that they find. We feed her dandelion leaves um, and then other some fruits and vegetables as well that she uses that beak to kind of chop through all those vegetables and leaves. So she is a tortoise, so she cannot bring her, her arms and legs completely into her shell and close up like our box turtle could. Um, but, and she's very slow. She's got smaller back legs. You can kind of see those there, the smaller back legs. I'm going to put her down on the table. Can I do that? I'm going to put her down, see if she'll move a little bit for us. Not so much. She's a little on the shy side. So she spends most of her time um, in her burrow under the ground. So her burrow is really important for other animals too because they dig these large burrows underground and then other animals will move into those burrows, burrows for protection. Different reptiles or small mammals and things could use that as a home as well. We have a special permit 
for a gopher tortoise. You can't have these as pets. Um, they're actually protected right now. They're trying to bring their numbers back. Their numbers are really low. Um, so they're doing special programs to try to increase the numbers of our gopher tortoises in our area. So this is Dirtle. Dirtle is a calming snapping turtle and he's been with us for many years at the Ruth Patrick and he is a favorite amongst our student visitors that we have. Um, so he's got a couple cool characteristics going on with him. He's got this tough shell um, that he uses for his protection of his body. So when turtles hatch out of their eggs, um, they have their shell as part of their body. It actually is made up of over 50 bones um, in their of their shell is made up of 50 bones of their body um, including I have another shell here that I can show you including the backbone you can kind of see the backbone that's running through the top of the shell there and even the rib bones we kind of have some rib bones that we can kind of make out on the sides of the shell as well from this snapping sh turtle shell that I have so a couple other things um, about Dirtle. Dirtle is an aquatic turtle, so he's going to be swimming in the water. He's got webbed toes um, for swimming, and he likes to kind of sit on the bottom of the lake or the pond, and he kind of waits for his food to come and to him. So he opens up his mouth and he can snap and trap food like small fish, um, amphibians, and even baby ducks sometimes um, if he's hungry enough. So I'm going to pick him up just a little bit and turn him so you can see a close-up on his face. He's got our little beady eyes there. And then don't scoot off the table, Dirtle. And his beak is very sharp for snapping through his food and catching on his food. So one of the wise tales about turtles is, or snapping turtles is once they snapped onto something, they would not um, let go until it rains. And that's not true. Eventually he's gonna get bored and he's gonna move on, but it does hurt when he bites down on um, to different um, foods and objects and things like that. So we make sure we keep our fingers away from his mouth and his head. So I'm gonna turn him around too, let you check out his tail. She's got a long tail for a turtle and he's got our little spikes that run down. So he is a reptile still. He is covered with that scaly skin um, and he is cold-blooded, so he feels cold to the touch when you touch him, unless he's been basking in the sun, which snapping turtles really don't spend a lot of time in the sun. So for our snakes, we have several different species at the Ruth Patrick. First, we're going to talk about corn snakes. So I have a male corn snake here. I'm going to grab him real quick. So this is Corny, our male, our male corn snake that we have. So he is a reptile. He has that dry, scaly skin. He has a backbone that he uses to move around. Um, we have, oh, he's getting fast today. So he is covered in those scales. They're identified, if you especially they get their name because of the scales on their belly. So if you can see, get him to hold still long enough, He's got a, a black and white, almost like a checkerboard pattern on his belly. And it kind of looks like the um, corn kernels of maize or what they call Indian corn um, is where he gets that name corn snake from. So he, they come in lots of different colors of different shades of reds, orange, grays, browns. Um, depending on where they live, depends on their, their color pattern that they have. So he's our male corn snake that we have. You can see he keeps sticking his tongue out. He's very curious right now. Um, when snakes stick their tongues out like that, what they're doing is they're actually tasting the air. So they're scenting the air with their tongue to see, am I a predator? Am I possibly, do I have prey for him? Because I'm the one that feeds him. So that's what he's kind of checking out right now. So we have a couple other snakes too, but before I move on from corny and corn snakes, I have another corn snake that I wanna share with you as well. And her name is Casper. She's an albino corn snake. So give me one second, I'm gonna grab her. So this girl here, this is Casper, and she is an albino corn snake. So she's just like the snake that you just saw, except she's lacking the pigment of the traditional corn snake. So she has the white skin, and if you can see her eyes, 
they are pink. So she has no pigment in her eyes either. So she's got those pink eyes and we can see that she is an albino. Now, reptiles are also cold blooded. So as I'm holding her, she feels cold to the touch. And what they would like to do, especially on colder days, is they would like to lay out in the sun and warm themselves up and the sun will help bring up their body temperature as they do that. During the winter, while we're teaching with our snakes, they like to try to slip into your like sweatshirt pocket or the hood of your sweatshirt while you're, while you're carrying them around, somewhere where they can warm up and almost steal your body heat um, so they can get warm from that. They use that warmth and bring their body heat up to help digest their food and it makes them more active. They are, move around faster um, when their body heat rises as well. So this is our gray rat snake, Betsy. Um, we've had her for a couple years now. Um, she, is, she is common in a wide variety of areas and habitats around here. Um, they can grow up to four to six feet um, long. They eat a variety of different small mammals like mice, rats, and little squirrels as well. They're great climbers. So they can get up into those nests and eat birds and, and eggs as well. Um, she is non-venomous. So all of our snakes here at the Ruth Patrick are non-venomous. So I'm trying to get her to stay still <laughs> so you can actually get a good shot of her. So rat snakes, there's a lot of different varieties. There's black rat snakes, gray rat snakes, red rat snakes. So there's different types and it just depends on the coloring that they have. So she would be considered a gray rat because of the gray um, coloring that she has as well. You can kind of see her, her face there. She's got a long black tongue. She's kind of smelling around, seeing what is in, what is in this area. So this is George. George is an Eastern King snake. Um, he lives in this area as well. Um, you'll find them in the woods and things around your backyard. Uh, he is a reptile just like our other snakes so he has those scaly skin. He uses that backbone and his scales to move around. He's very strong. This guy is going to get up to six feet as well in length. One of our cool things about our Eastern King snakes is they eat lots of different things um, from lizards and toads um, to small mammals, even other snakes. And one of the great benefits of having him in your backyard is he actually will eat venomous snakes as well. So he's not um, affected by their venom. There we go. He's a big boy too. Woo! <laughs> there he is. So he is been with us for many years, like our other snakes, um, and we use them for all of our educational programs here at the Ruth Patrick. This is our American alligator, Holden. So Holden is a American alligator. He's about four or five years old. Um, we've had him since he was a baby. Um, and we use them for all of our educational programs. We use Holden to show people some of the characteristics of reptiles. So he has that dry scaly skin and his skin is very tough on his back, um, almost like armor. On his belly, he still is covered with scales and they're a little bit softer, a little bit more vulnerable down here. So he has webbed toes, those toes, are going to help him swim in the swamps and the marsh areas. He's got this big strong tail that's going to help him maneuver through the swamp as well. His coloring helps him blend in with the different um, grasses and other swampy waters. What he's calling there. So if you hear that, so that's the sound that a baby alligator makes when he's calling its mom. So up to about two years old, the mom will actually take care and protect their baby. So if you ever see a baby alligator, they look like they're easy to handle because they're so small, but you gotta remember that mom is not far away. And if they make that sound, chances are mom will come run in to protect them. 
So he also, even though he's, he's young, let me see if I can get him to open up his mouth for us. There we go. So he's got lots of sharp little teeth in there and he uses those when he catches his prey. So he is built perfectly to live in those, that murky water of the swamp. His eyes are kind of set up high on top of his head. And if he hits a tree branch, they'll kind of like drop down into the skull a little bit, bit. And he has a special eyelid that will cover his eyes, help him see underwater. His nostrils are right there on the tip of his snout. They're gonna stick up over the water's edge so he can just stick his nose out. Um, because remember, he's a reptile. Reptiles need their lungs in order to breathe oxygen. So he's gonna breathe with his lungs. He can stick that out and pop up out from underneath of the water and just stick his nose out so he can sneak up on his prey.